Hello, I'm Derek Wheatley and welcome to episode 54 of the Weekly Wheatley Podcast. I want to say thank you very much to Collie Ennis for last week's episode, uh, for coming on and talking about all this creepy crawlies and spiders and all those kind of things that people either love or hate it seems but uh, colleagues obviously loves them I thought it was a great episode my dad it's my dad's favorite episode so far so I'm pretty happy with that um so thanks very much Collie we really appreciate it uh thanks everyone for all the support as usual for listening tuning in um this recording on a Sunday so I did a, a one of the live and joyful things on Instagram last night um where we Eva Parks and that was really uh really good and you know it's trying to spread a bit of joy and lift the mood a bit and you know trying not to talk about the the main things that are going on right now so keep an eye out for those because they'll be coming uh there'll be more coming on the way probably this week and next week and all that so um that's enough for me for now so i'll introduce my guest she's a music therapist um a music teacher and a trad musician and her name is i'm gonna no do you know what i'm gonna say the irish i'm gonna say the irish because i've tested myself all week so her name is bernadine nivioran how are you Bernadette. I'm good, Derek. Thank you. And that's lovely pronunciation. Well done. <laughs> oh, do you know, like I mentioned, I mentioned before that the, we started recording, my my landlady did give me a little bit of a hand with that. I was going to, do you know what I was going to do just for, just for you, right? Just for, in honour of you coming on, I was going to say my Irish name that was given to me by, by teachers, because obviously Wheatley is not a, an Irish name, it's an English name. So they called me Defweetley, which is... Oh, shocking and and it was one of those names right when i was in school it, it, like my friends used to say it as a kind of a joke like a nickname defweishly because it sounded so ridiculous but <laughs> it, was, it was one of those things where the teacher made a big point of like if you were there right bernadette they would have said neve Yoron, and that would have been it obviously yeah. because mine is an english name they she kind of made a point of saying oh, i'll have to look that up i'll have to figure that out and it stood out then because she you know yeah she did it but listen you're a teacher and maybe you can get into the, the psychology of that later on <laughs> but um, listen uh, could you give us a, a short history of your upbringing please yeah absolutely um so i uh, i'm from a small village in offley called horsleep and um, if you if you ever traveled on the old dublin road to galway um you will have passed through it surely um but yeah yeah it's a it's a it's a pretty small place rural um i i'd be from a big a big enough family there's five of us in it all women and um we yeah it pretty i would say normal uh, upbringing and happy i i have to say yeah. i have you know that's that's kind of the main thing that sticks out when i think about my childhood it was a happy one good you know, that's yeah. nice i think uh actually horse sleep that's funny because you mentioned what the old road we uh traveled we we went to school in dublin myself and my brothers and we were living up there with my mom we travel every three weeks down to see my dad and um, we were obviously coming from dublin to athlone so we used to go through a horse sleep every time so it was one of those places where it was in our heads when we got to horse sleep we were close enough like we were getting there uh, yeah, yeah so so we we were always passing through so i've been there a lot and it's it's weird that you say that i don't think i've been there in you know i don't know how long because the, obviously the, the bypass and all that yeah yeah you wouldn't you wouldn't kind of um you wouldn't make a point to to go with the old road or anything like that um, exactly yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> so tell us um when did you become aware of mental health um that's that's a really really good question um and it's one that i i actually find it hard to answer because i don't um i don't have like a particular memory or a particular i i, I can't remember a light bulb moment you know that kind of way um where i first became aware of it um and i think it i think that's because of the way that we were brought up uh when i was uh young quite young um my mother changed careers she was a nurse but she retrained as a psychotherapist so um she kind of to you know to make a long story short she um would have brought a lot of her training and knowledge from her work into everyday life mm -hmm. you know so we were always encouraged to um to look after our mental health i suppose and if we were ever feeling sad or anxious or worried we always we were always encouraged to talk about it and um even i suppose in 
in our in a, a sort of a wider context of our friends and things you know if we're to look out for look out for our friends if any of them were feeling sad talk to them and ask them why or you know that kind of thing um so it, it just was kind of a part of life I suppose so um that I think that's why I don't have the this kind of really defining moment mm. of when when I became aware of mental health and what it meant um because it was always there but I suppose um there were little there were little times where I would have joined joined the dots on things where um you know I would I would I'd be a bit of a worrier you know mm. a natural worrier and um as a child and even to this day um when I when I feel anxious, I feel it in my stomach. I feel it as nausea, you know. And um, so I have lots and lots of memories from primary school right up to my leave insert where I wouldn't want to go to school. Because, and I'd go and I'd say to mum in the morning, I feel sick. I don't want to go to school. And she knew and always told me that that was worry. And she always warned us that worrying would make us sick, you know. And so that's, I mean, that was kind of my understanding of it. Like, oh, I'm feeling so stressed out that I'm sick, you know. And yeah. um, and I suppose at, at that time when we were going to school, there wasn't, um, I mean, we understood it here at home, but I, I don't feel like there was a wider understanding from other people or from the teachers that we had. And that's no, that's no shame on them. I'm not trying to say that they were bad people yeah. or anything. But it there just wasn't the same understanding that you know stress and worry that could uh, the, the physical effect it could have on you. I don't yeah. I don't think that was emphasised when I was going to school. So yeah. um, I think it was those moments where um, where I really kind of where I felt the importance of looking after your mental health and making sure that you didn't kind of get to the point where the stress will actually make you physically sick you know mm. because you know i and i i learned it the hard way as well you know you know letting it all bubble up to a point i remember one particular stressful situation in my teens where i just i didn't talk about it i didn't tell anybody and you know i was afraid to tell anybody i didn't know how to broach the subject all that kind of thing and i remember it just made me so sick and uh, you know, and I went, I, I remember I was, I was to go to school that day and I just had my breakfast and this is disgusting, but I went and I, you know, I actually was physically sick. I vomited mm. and um, that, and it was then that I had to, I had to tell mom what was going on and which was, it was unusual for me to kind of keep things from her as well, you mm. know. Um, so yeah, I had to tell her what was going on and um you know, and she explained then that, that what had happened was a reaction to the stress that I was under. And that I suppose, yeah, I mean, maybe I've, I've just found my light bulb moment. moment. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, this is the thing, Bernadette, right? Because uh, over the course of, uh, you're actually, I, I was looking it up today. You're the 39th uh, guest that we've had on the show. This is such a like. Uh, uh, this is one of those questions that seem to really show, um, kind of over Ireland and over age groups as well, because we've obviously had different age groups as well. Um, that and you speak about like in school. It's look, it was the same in my school, but they just didn't know, and it wasn't a, you know, it's not a slight on them or anything like that. But yeah, that worry. I had that in school, and I didn't know what it was. You know, I didn't know what to put it down to. Um, mm. the, the kind of nerves is some worrying, worrying yourself sick, and I think. Uh, I think it's great that your mom was able to kind of bring it uh, into the house and kind of remind you or, or let you know what it was. We had a guest on, uh, Nicola uh, Glynn, and she had the same experiences. Her mom was in a, uh, within the within that uh, uh, work workspace where she could yeah. bring it back and tell people, uh, t sorry, tell people, but tell her kids in particular that this is what it is and this is what you have to look out for. So it's it's encouraging in that sense. I I look. I like to think that everything's improving all the time with it and like. A lot more people are speaking yeah, out about I it. Think it I think yeah. it is in certain ways, yeah. Yeah. So um but yeah, that's a really good answer actually, because I like the way you uh you kind of worked it out 
as you were going along. Uh, but but here's the thing, right? It's a question that really nobody can answer like spot on. Nobody knows exactly when they found uh, or when they heard or became aware of mental health. So it's just one that uh, that's why I like to kind of send it to the guest in, you know, a few days mm -hmm. beforehand so they can maybe just have a little think about uh, the ideas and the, the, the memories of it, you know. Um, yes. So obviously we're going to talk, well, a lot about music in this episode. Um, what were your early musical influences? Oh, now, um, <clears throat> excuse me, a real mixed bag. Um, <laughs> because I think, like, like I said before, um, we're a big family here. Um, there, obviously, there was the five of us here growing up. Um, my two, there's two older sisters than me and two younger. We're kind of, me and the younger sisters are kind of like, um, I call us a second batch um, because there's quite a big age difference. Okay. Um, but uh, yeah, there's all of us. And then there's obviously my, my parents and then my uncle lived with us. Oh, well, he still, do, he still does live here as well. You know, he lives here at home. Um, so there was eight of us in the house growing up and um, everybody had their different their different tastes, you know, mm. so there was there was always music on in the house, but um, it was always different depending on, I don't know, who was there, who had theirs on the loudest or sometimes everybody had it all at the same time. But um, there was a lot of a lot of trad on the Dubliners because my my dad and my uncle are very into their Irish music and um uncle mike loves the country music too and um, so there was a bit of that um my my mom loves my mom likes a bit of everything um i know it, when i think about her record collection um there's a lot of kind of motown that's mm. that sort of music um because my mom uh, was born in england grew up in england so um um i don't know if that's a direct connection but that's what she likes anyway and uh, then you know, my, I think the biggest though, biggest influence um, would be from my oldest sister, Mary. She is an avid music lover and uh, she has a massive collection of music. And it was like, t as, as a kid, because I, I, I really loved music for, I think for as long as I can remember, I just have always loved music and thought about music all the time. Um, and I remember her CD collection and tapes, um, as it was back in the day as well. Um, she, it was like a treasure trove. It was so cool. And, um, you know, she, we'd, I'd spend time with her. Record, you remember you used to record songs off the radio? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, I, I'd spend a lot of time doing that with her or, um, she would make me little mixtapes of, um, the, of the, different bands that I liked from her collection and um yeah they were it was it was it was pretty amazing and she always kind of encouraged that as well and um yeah I, you know there was just there was just so much music all the time I, I could be here all day talking about it but um I think in terms of influences she hmm. would be would have been probably the biggest yeah yeah that's the, like we we were similar but there's only three of us now in the house three three lads like and we were similar uh in the almost like who could play it the loudest because there was a quite a difference in our in our tastes you know and that and that's that's good because i think it it kind of it does still kind of come across like you know that that you may not like their their favorite bands but then something will come across where you kind of think actually that sounds quite good so i do quite like that um you know the influences are quite mixed and it is a good thing to have loads and loads of different uh types of music that you're into obviously but um because yeah. there's something for every every kind of mood then and we'll obviously chat about that but um when did you start uh playing music then um, I started playing music um, in senior infants. Um, I remember really distinctly a local music teacher had sent flyers to the school. Um, they were on blue paper. <laughs> I don't know why that's a memory, but um, yeah. So I remember just taking that flyer home and, you know, that weekend, Daddy went to um, the music shop there in Tullamore and bought a tin whistle and brought them home. He brought home whistles for each of us you know because you can't get for one and not the other yeah. um in that you know um so we all had tin whistles and then i went to lessons and yeah learned kind of some of the basics and that that was kind of where it all started mm. off yeah that's where it all started off on the that with that little 
little tin whistle with the red sticker. Yeah. Yeah. I, I actually started on tin whistle too, believe it or not. I think it was second class or something like that. But so yeah. I want, I want to talk a bit about trap music because I know you, you play trap music and it'd be very disingenuous of me to, to, to not say this because I'm, it wouldn't be my favorite type of music. Right. But, yeah. the re- but the reason I'm telling you this, it's, it's, uh, because otherwise people will be thinking that I, I, this show, I'm always been honest on this show. That's the whole point of this show. But what I will say about trap music, what I do love about trap music is the passion. There's yeah. amazing uh, talent, like musicianship, but the community that it creates, because I, you know, I could be wrong saying this and I'm sure it's, I'm sure I'm wrong. <laughs> I have been many times on this, but when, you know, if there's a trad session going on in a pub, people can just join in like you know someone grab a guitar they want to join in and play that i do love the idea of that because it is very very inclusive you know um yeah. so I, I i was talking to my dad about music last night and the point he made is there's no bad music because people like music people like different types of music and what may not be for you is someone else is going to be mad on it you know and uh, i love that yeah that's and yeah. that's that's that that'd be my belief about music as well. Like I hate to hear people saying, "Oh, that's crap," you mm. know, um, because if someone else likes it. You know, you don't exactly. have to listen to it. <laughs> exactly. That that's exactly what it is, though. You don't have to listen to it. You don't have to be part of it. Like, but what is it that you love about the trad scene? Um. Well, I think a lot of what you've actually just said is just the fact that um. You know, you can go, you can go to a session and you can sit down and play a few tunes and, you know, you, you might know everybody there, mm. but the, um, one of the biggest things that I love about, uh, trad music is the attunement that happens, you know, at a trad session. I mean, you know, you, you, you don't know for sure what tune I'm going to start next, but mm. it, it's just, you know. You, I might start off some a set of reels or something, and you know I just kind of give a nod to somebody, or you know it might be the tiniest little thing, a bit of eye contact, and they know that I'm going to change the tune. Mm. They listen for a second, and then that you know it about a bar, and if you know what you join in, and yeah. um, you can often pick up a tune in a matter of seconds as well at a session, and it's just I, I really I that's one of my favorite things about it is just you know, that the the kind of the, the non-verbal interactions mm. between the musicians are, you know, they're so they're so small, like that you wouldn't notice them. But when you really think about it, it's 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 uh, it's it's magical. Like, you know, mm. it's it's great. It, and it's um yeah, it's just wonderful that I think that's one of my favorite things about it. Yeah. Do you know, it's, it's funny when you you talk about that with the with the eye contact or not at the head of whatever it is. Like that's another thing that I didn't say there that I, that I love. There's there's almost like people within the within the scene, um, and I'd say this in every town, but um, that they just <laughs> seem to have an arsenal of songs in their mind. You know, they just know. Yeah. And every like you're saying, you you may start playing a reel, and then they're they're off. They go for it, and that, like that's what. That's what I guess the point is of me saying that, you know, it's not my kind of music, but the, I appreciate everything that goes into it, you know, and, and the, 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 the crack that people have around it. Like that's another thing. Yeah. And, and I actually, I actually quite like the, um, you know, the slower kind of music where, where, um, uh, is it a Shanos? Is that the right? Shan, is, Shanos singing. Is that what yeah. you're Yeah. Yeah. And there's the slow airs as well. Yeah. It's quite, it's, it's quite like, um, even though it's obviously the lyrics are probably very, very sad. Everything's, you know, it's the whole point of it, but it's, I find it quite relaxing, you know, whereas everything else, maybe, and maybe that's what it is, right? Cause ch- trad, at, trad at a high speed is quite, it, to, to me, like it's kind of gets my heart going and I get really anxious about it. I'm like, Jesus, what's going on? You know, like it's, it's all going to kick off at the pub, um, but, <laughs> but it's not, it's, it's going to kick off in a good way. So like, do you feel like then, um, when you're involved and you're playing music and you're in pubs or clubs, whatever it is, uh, do you feel that like a, a kind of a part of community then? Yeah, absolutely. And um, I mean, when you, when you grow up in, kind, well, when you grow up musically, I suppose, in the, in the trad scene, you, you meet so many people because maybe, you know, maybe you go to flowers or maybe you kind of get roped into a Kaylee band or something, you, but you, you do, you travel around 
and um when we were when uh because my one of my sisters played music as well that would have been close in age and you know we'd go we'd go far and wide for sessions mm. and you know with one of our music teachers who um to this day is a good friend of mine Camilla Tiny um he taught us so much music and so much about the, um he taught us so much about um the heart of traditional music which is what you're saying about the the community mm. at, that you feel playing with other musicians and the you know the fact that you know you could be sitting in a big circle of musicians and it's just there's nothing it's like there's nothing around you but the music mm. you know and to, to be part of something like that is just um it's indescribable really mm. you know it's it's just it's just so wonderful and you know it was something that really kind of kept me going as well when I'd come home from college and uh, because obviously you're doing when you do a uh, course like I did the the BA Irish music and dance in Limerick and it's a it's performance based and it, there's so you know it, it's high standard it's at times high pressure and that's not a bad thing in its mm. own way but sometimes you just want to come home and play tunes and yeah. not be not worry that you're not putting off putting enough variations into it or that you didn't hit that role right yeah. you know you just want to play some tunes and it was one of the kind of save and grace type things if when i come home at the weekend i could i knew that maybe miller was having a session in p egan's mode or something and i could go and just let rip you know yeah. it was great you know so yeah, have you have you ever played outside of the trad scene? Have you ever gigged in a, in any other type of genre? I suppose. Um, kind of. Well, I I played in a in a, a pub band there for a long time uh, while I was doing my masters, and that kind of brought us around. But we were still we were doing a lot of like ballad and hmm. st a lot of Irish songs. Still throw in the odd pop song, put a trad twist on it, kind of. Yeah. Um, yeah, there was that, and then um, I, I am part. I'm part of a band now called the Cardinal Sins. We'd be a Celtic punk rock type thing, you know. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, no, and that's that's so much fun because um, my other my other great love is rock music. So it's like bringing the two together, perfect. and you know, the teenager inside me is screaming. <laughs> yeah, that, that sounds perfect, though. That sounds perfect. Yeah. Um, oh, absolutely, yeah. I love kind of that as well, like the bit of a mishmash of, of genres as well. I think that's kind of fun, you know, and it's fun for the, yeah. fun for the not just for the audience, but for, for the person playing the music. But um, I'll just sneak in this ad, Bernadette, and then we'll go again, sure, all right? Yeah. Fusion Training Centre, Monksland Athlone, a place to train in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, kickboxing, martial arts, and CrossFit. A great atmosphere with experienced coaches and a real sense of community. If you want to join the team, find us on Facebook at Fusion Training Center or drop in for a chat. Fusion Training Center, train like a warrior. I got that right. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's the worst part of it when I do get it right. I'm so cocky all of a sudden, like, you know, and I know I'm going to make it balls of it next week. So it's, you know, but so let's talk um, about uh, uh, music therapy. So um, I mentioned before it how the two words, I've taken part in both things, and I, I think it sounds really nice, but first of all, what is musical therapy or music therapy? Um, okay, so music therapy, um, I mean, I always thought, you know, it sounds like what it says in the tin, but um, I suppose to really define it, it's um, it's using music um, as, uh, as, as a, a health intervention, okay? So to... Um, Use, you use music-based interventions to address non-musical clinical health goals, you know. So, for example, communication um, issues, um, uh, mental health issues, um, you know, and it's, it's, bringing, it's bringing the creative to the clinical, if that mm. makes sense. No, it absolutely makes sense. Yeah, it's, it's one of these things, look, because... Um, I, I find it like I find things like this fascinating because obviously, first of all, I didn't know about it, right? Mm. So I I don't I hadn't even heard of it, which is kind of disappointing for me. I think a little bit, um, you know, what, when do you know actually? Just this is kind of a this is kind of a, a question I'm just throwing in. Is it has it been around a, a while? Music therapy, it has, yeah. Right. Um, so in, you know, it's it it is in still a little bit in its fledgling 
days, I think, in Ireland. Um, but it, the, the profession of music therapy has been around since post World War II, oh, um, where it was it was used as a treatment for um, veterans, um, for anyone for veterans who are experiencing post traumatic stress disorder. Do you, do you know? Hmm. So um, you know, it's a, it's as far back as that. And I mean, if you 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 could you could suppose that it goes back further again when you know the the in ancient greece and those kind of civilizations they would have used music as as um just in a, in a kind of a health context i think i think i read somewhere once where in where it was used in treating something like arachnophobia or something like that you know really? yeah yeah i think now i'd, I'd have to check yeah. that one but i'm sure that's what i read because i thought it was so strange but yeah it, it, it was you know as far back as that we've at least known the health benefits hmm. that can be got from music you know and from from arts and creativity uh but as a profession it it would have started in in those days post-war mm. i think in the 1950s yes in the 1950s it became kind of an official prof profession okay so it's yeah so it uh, like you say it's still fledgling days but it's not it's around a bit longer than i i, I thought it was uh, i thought it was but so why did you want to become a, a musical therapist a music therapist why do you keep saying musical i should scribble that out uh, on it, <laughs> music it's, therapist it's yeah, well, a lot of people say musical ther therapy, um, but you know, it 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 is you know the we can drop the the al, <laughs> yeah. um, you know, because I think I think um, you know when I think there you know it, it kind of gives a sense that it it's not you saying musical therapy, um, I don't think you know captures the fact that the. The music is the tool that we are using, mm. you know. So, um, you know, that's that's um, that's a that's I think maybe something something um, that I haven't really thought about there before. Well, it's, just, just, it's stuck I in my head, it. and I wrote it down. You see, first off here, and I'm thinking like musical therapy would be more. You'd be jumping around singing songs from cats. That that's in my head now. You see, and that's not what you. This is not what you do. So, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna go right. Uh, why did you want to become a music therapist? Well, um, I think I always had uh, an interest in, um, you know, doing something for others, using using my kind of gifts and talents in music for others. And for a long time, I thought that I wanted to be a teacher. I had this plan that I was going to be a music and Irish teacher in a secondary school. But then I remember doing some work experience where I got to teach a secondary school class and I did not like it. Okay. So, um, so I went to, I went to college with this kind of, um, I knew I wanted to do music anyway. So I said, right, well, I'm just going to do this and let's see, you know, I'll, I'll think about it after, you know, I kind of, you know, in terms of career and everything, I just said, right, I'll find something. Mm -hmm. Um, but we, we were being, we were at a lecture to do with careers in my first year of, of the BA and they mentioned music therapy and I was like, wow, you know, um, you know, cause I never had the confidence or anything to go for psychotherapy no. or anything like that, because the route for that from leaving cert, you know, it was high points and I thought, oh, I'll never get that, yeah. you know, and then I just was so into music that it didn't even, you know, I just wanted to do music and nothing else really. Um, so when I heard music therapy, I thought, wow, that sounds, that sounds cool. There was just like this little click and I looked into it a lot more, found out that there was a master's down in Limerick hmm. and I looked into it and I thought that that is for me. I, I want to do that. And so that became the goal, yeah. you know, everything I did, every elective module I picked was working towards it, towards um, getting onto that master's and thank God I did because I would have been crushed. <laughs> yeah, I think, you know, it's, how would, so uh, like I said already, and you know, it was something that I've been thinking for of the last few days or the last 
couple of weeks since I, I, I asked mm-hmm. you to come on. And it's 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 a, the reason it's of interest to me, I guess, uh, would, obviously I'm very, very into music. Um, I have been through different types of therapy, which I've mentioned on here before, so I won't run through them again. But um, the idea for me uh, of music therapy sounds like something that would suit me. And like when I read through um, the, the ideas behind it and some of the stuff on your page and things like that, how would someone know if they were a candidate for uh, music therapy? Mm, that's a that's a good question. Um, I suppose, like you say, that kind of um, that uh, you're, you like you, what you de- described there as being motivated by music, mm. and um, you know that's that's a that's a big factor because I mean everybody everybody likes music, but we always say that just simply liking music is not really is not really enough you know um and i mean that's just i i suppose that's something we kind of put out there as well um because when we'd be working in different different types of uh, clinical settings you'd get a lot of referrals that when you ask for the reason t- that you're referring the client they would you, you'd get just they love music you right. know mm-hmm. and it's like well what do you think music can help them address you know so um i suppose it's just if you think that you that music can help you in some way to achieve a non-musical goal as we say so maybe that's maybe that's um for for someone uh you know um improving their mood or alleviating the symptoms of stress or depression or anxiety or um or just even that using their own resources that they have their kind of potential mm. to um to uh you know maybe find new skills that they didn't realize they have i find it a lot when i'm working with older people or people who maybe maybe they, they have a a degenerative disorder uh, or disease that you know, is bringing them limitations. Mm. Uh, music can help out bring, music can help to bring out new potentials in them that they might not realize that they had, or, you know, so that's, so that's something that's a, that's a, that can be something that would, um, you know, make someone a, a candidate for mm. music therapy. Uh, so do you, do you, like, you obviously get a lot of, um, you know, people people who have been going to therapy and then they get, like, say, recommended to you as, like you said, if somebody's really into music, they get recommended to you. Do yeah. you get people that come to you without a, re- a referral as such? Someone who would, like, almost like walking off the street, but you, you know what I mean by that phrase. But, yeah, just someone that would just come to you without going through another kind of form of therapy. Oh, so, like, a, like do you mean, like, a self-referral or they yeah. haven't done it? Okay, a self-referral. Um, no, I don't. I don't get a lot of those, and I think, but I don't think that's for any particular reason other than that I work in settings where um, I work in a lot of uh, disability service mm. settings, and um, so there's all there's a manager or there's a key staff who is making the referral. Um, I I do have I do have one group um where some of it would be mixed where so they it it's part of a day service um for people with disabilities and they you know so some of the some of the service users at that particular uh center would have referred themselves for the group or and then others would have been referred by staff so yeah i have had those situations yeah so if anybody that's yeah. So if anybody was listening to this and thought like, "Oh, this sounds like something for me," they they can go to you. Oh yes, absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Oh, they can. You know, you can absolutely self refer, and you know, you can you can. Um, I mean, it all starts with reaching out. Hmm. Is isn't that it? You know, yeah. it it all starts with a, a text or a call or an email, and you know, uh, I can then talk you talk with you and have a chat, and we can talk through you know your reasons for you know why you why you're coming to music therapy what can what would you like to achieve for yourself mm. um or you know if i'm working with someone who um doesn't who might not 
have that kind of self awareness, I can speak to their staff ab- about it um, yeah. with them. You know, it, obviously depending on the client. But the, the I think the fact that um, music therapy can reach such a wide range of people, where perhaps traditional talk therapies can't. You know, yeah. always do. You know. Um, because you know we can work on a on a a verbal level you know and verbal with music and the two combine or we can just work on a completely non-verbal level as mm. well for anyone who might need that you know yeah like uh, t- uh, like i say right the traditional uh, therapies have helped me an awful lot yeah. um what I will say at the start, when I first started going, and I was between two, I was in, uh, first of all, in the West Mead one, then I was out in the Roscommon uh, the medical centres. They, they're quite an intimidating place for somebody who's, um, it's not the staff, by the way, <laughs> I'm not, it's not yeah. that, but for someone who's with anxiety and stuff, it's like, uh, you know, corridors, you know, long, echoey corridors, and then you go into a, a, a room and it's just a table and a chair do you know what i mean like there's something kind of intimidating about that well there was for me so i wouldn't speak for yeah, other it's, people it's, it's quite institutional and i think yeah. that's a bit of a that's a bit of a bad word these days in ireland you know it's kind of mm. something we're trying to shake off really isn't yeah it? It, you're right actually yeah it, we are trying to shake it off and, and look I, I the thing about it like i i don't know what i expect the rooms to be like if you know what i mean i'm not having to go with the people who set up the rooms anything like that yeah, there's a yeah. certain amount of budget as well that goes into it they can't decorate it with libraries of books and stuff it's just not possible if people come to you then what what, what kind of setup do you have um well usually i go to i go to the client so i might go to them in their homes or their residential if they're in residential services i might go there or in their day service i might visit them i i suppose you know it's it's partially because you know i i work on kind of a freelance basis and i don't have my own center yet (laughs) Um, but um that's something that i would like to have you know in the future but that's another another thing um but yeah i go to i go to the client where they're comfortable and um that's that's how I've been working on it so far. Um, so yeah, I would I would bring. Uh, so I I suppose whatever is portable, you know, which you know my guitar is what I bring that everywhere that I go, and then I'd bring a selection of instruments, and we'd kind of we've I'd always, you know, have a conversation with the the staff maybe there or the the parent or the the yeah, whoever the main, kind of main carer who is, you know, seeking out the service for the for the person they're caring for, and um, we'd have a conversation about what might work best. And you know, uh, sometimes we would work in a sensory room, mm. uh, or sometimes you know, we, I'd always look to have a circle, especially if it's a group. Um, but mostly, it's just a a room where we can be comfortable where I can set up a few instruments and, um, you know, that, but that's, um, that's, I suppose, you know, what, what I've kind of been working with so far. I think my ideal, my ideal situation would be, you know, somewhere with a bit of color, maybe, (laughs) um, I know a lot of, a lot of, um, more kind of clinical settings. I think that's something that is lacking. Um, you know, uh, but so yeah, just somewhere that is comfortable. Maybe a couple of plants here and there. Um, yeah, that's nice. A good. That's a lovely idea, though. And that, like, to remove that setting of the sterile, sterile, you know, room where it's all just everything you know is going to be serious. Do you know what I mean? Like, it doesn't have. Like, I think the whole point. Like, my idea of 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 just chatting to you now, really, like about music therapy, is that it's not going to be full on talk getting deeply rooted into your childhood there will be parts obviously but i like yeah. the idea of, like bringing along the instruments encouraging people to to obviously to get involved in, in playing those instruments yeah. do you find that people are like i know it depends on the person but you find that people do like getting involved get, participating in, in a bit of music like that yeah um that's yeah i suppose once once they get comfortable hmm. and um you know it's something that something that you kind of you you do 
you are told obviously when you're training but you you learn it along the way is that not everyone is going to straight away want to you know get into playing an instrument so you won't always have someone who has had experience with either making music or playing instruments before you know and um I mean that's that's an important thing as well you don't have to have previous musical experience and um, you know you, that's that you know that's kind of one of those myths as well that oh well I didn't play music before so I can't do it no that's not true and um, it's for absolutely anybody who you know is motivated by music and um but yeah so you yeah you would you know always have to go with the client's comfort mm -hmm. level you know and if if they're not comfortable straight away you know playing on a drum or some or playing any kind of instrument then you have to work with that i mean that's that's the that's that'll be my approach yeah and um, you work i work with the the person who is in front of me and i work with them as and where they're at and um, and i suppose that you know that's kind of part of the humanistic approach uh, mm. that that I take on and I just that's what I believe in um but yeah so I think that you know that we can forget ourselves sometimes you know because especially if you know we're musicians before we trained as therapists and we we're automatically comfortable mm -hmm. with playing music um and it can be easy to forget sometimes that not everybody is yeah. you know um so you definitely um there you do that but that's part of building up that trust you know mm. that client therapist relationship and the trust that comes with that you know so maybe it it might take six weeks before your client uh even looks at your instruments for some people it might start out by listening to some music yeah and uh, whether it's live music where you're playing it or you might play some of some of their favorite artists or some you know, it's always dependent on your client and who you have in yeah. front of you. Well, well now that you mention that, because this is another thing I read uh, recently on your, on your page, actually, uh, the familiar song kind of theory, the, the idea behind it. And obviously I looked it up about, uh, looked it up afterwards. So could you explain like just kind of the idea behind the familiar song um, therapy? Okay. Yeah. So, um, yeah, something, it's familiar songs. It's just, I suppose, what we call you know your client's favorite music you know um and it's uh it's it's just yeah it's your it's songs that might hold a significant meaning or maybe your client just enjoys that artist hmm. and it's it can kind of when you use that that music you know you follow that thread and uh, maybe i work with someone who likes Ed Sheeran so you know I that might involve us playing an Ed Sheeran song together you know where I kind of play and sing it and they might play and sing it along with me um, or we might listen to it and um, talk about the lyrics and it's 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 kind of I, I find it really really useful for bridging a bridging a gap you know um, and you know making a connection it's like well I'm here and i i'm interested in your music you know it shows that you're interested in the client and what they have to say and what's important to them mm. you know rather than coming in and saying oh well i don't know any ed sheeran song you know you know you wouldn't you just simply wouldn't do that like yeah. you know or if you didn't know them you might say well we can we can learn them or we can listen to them together Um, you know it can it can do that in working with older people it can facilitate reminiscence and um so that's where you know when when you were saying about going going into your childhood you know you might say you might sing or play a song that they knew as a teenager um and i find working with old older people it's always the songs it's from maybe their teenage years or their young adulthood which are you know that's where your formative experiences happen you yeah. know you know where you're you know and you know those are kind of some of the strongest musical memories you know that's but that's in my experience of working with older older people um but yeah you can play a song from that era and they will 
you know, and it can open up all these all these memories and uh, a window into the person that they are, you mm. know, and so um, they're really useful in that way. Um, yeah, because I, I love the idea. I, like, I think everybody can relate to turning on a song and bang, you're back to, you know, when you're 15 or whatever. I think I think everybody can kind of that's very that's a universal thing. And for me, you know, there's 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 songs that I love, like and just like adore uh, the songs, and they will bring me back in time. But there's also songs then that like I I listen to and I they they hurt like they're like yeah. you're saying about formative years, whether it's you broke up with someone or you know something terrible happened, like with maybe someone passed away around the time that this song came out. It could be any number of things. Like, yeah, what is the kind of what is the kind of thing for you when it comes to that? Like, because obviously you want to you don't want to just all happy songs to make the person happy because you no, you have to it's dig never deep as well that, yeah. yeah it's never it's never about just playing songs and making people happy like i mm. think that's a big big mix, misconception you know that music therapy is always happy and it's always it's for it's for cheering you up and mm. um, you know it can look like raw emotion and you know it can be sad um so f- i suppose you know, it's it's about it's about um, what those songs bring up for you, and you might take that song then, and um, you know, you might use lyric analysis where you would, you know look through the lyrics and talk about what the lyrics bring up for you, or if it's like you say, it brings up just the song itself brings up a memory of a loved one who who passed. You know, you might kind of delve into that and, um, you know, process the emotions and memories around that, Mm -hmm. you know, that arose from the song, you know, so it's, so that's, so I think that's a a really powerful way to use familiar songs, but um, you would, you mightn't always, you mightn't always know that that's going to happen, but I suppose part of why it's so important, um, it, why it's so important to kind of mu- use music carefully is that it can have that effect. Mm. And if you have someone who, you know, is not trained in therapeutic skills, you know, you, you know, and, and this isn't to say that anyone who is going into uh, a day service or a, a nursing home, like they're not doing a bad thing by mm. going in and playing a few songs. They, they are not, um, you know, they're not committing a crime or, you know, but, you know, I think it is important to have an awareness that of how powerful music can be. And part of, part of um, why it, why uh, a music therapist is important or a trained qualified music therapist is important um, is that we do have the skills to kind of process that emotion that can be triggered from music yeah. with the person and we can do it safely you know um you know like it's 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 just it's all about it, it's all about context and that as well you know but um yeah it can be so powerful mm. and that is why i think if you um if you are looking for music therapy you need to find someone who is trained yeah. and qualified, you know. If you're, if you're looking for music therapy, um, and this is your chance to sell the name and the brand, all right? Yeah, I know. This is the worst part having to do with that. But um, uh, where would they find you if they were looking for some music therapy? Well, um, you know, uh, I work under the name Anam Kjol Music Therapy, um, and we are on we're on almost all of the socials we're on uh, we're on facebook and instagram we also have twitter and linkedin um and you know my details are on the iacat website the irish association of creative arts therapists okay. and you can go to that website actually that's a brilliant website um where they there is a registry of creative arts therapist and that in that encompasses music dance drama and art therapy you know so you can whatever modality you want to 
want to work with you can you know you can key you can put in the keywords music awfully and my details and maybe okay. some other come up yeah. you know your your modality and your location and then you pick your therapist whoever Brilliant. it sounds like yeah i didn't re- i didn't realize there was a, a, a spot where you can kind of go to to for all that because we are actually having an art therapist on i think it's three or four weeks time um oh, great. yeah so i'm really looking forward to that chat as well because again it's uh, it's something that I want to piece together, but the two things together, but it sounds like I, like the music therapy. It sounds great crack, like not great crack. That's that's very it sounds like something that would suit me a lot better than things that I was doing, even though I was helped out a lot. You know, yeah. Um you're also a music teacher. That's right, isn't it? Yeah, well, I, I give um, I give music lessons and I've, I suppose it would have been my bread and butter through mm. college. Um, you know, it's, I suppose teaching trad music, it, there's kind of an informality about it, you know, um, you know, uh, but yeah, so I do, I, I give music lessons in trad music and, um, so that's an, another, another side of things. <laughs> you've, you've been able to do that now still, obviously, uh, kind of Zoom, Skype kind of situation, are you? Yes, thankfully. Yeah. yeah, I've been able to I've been able to run some of my uh, therapy sessions as well. What okay. some, you know, depending on the kind of technology that's available to my clients. Um, but yeah, I've been able to keep my music lessons going. Thankfully, I kind of got I got clued in over the summer, like because it all stopped in March and I was, you know, I wouldn't be very good with technology so i didn't really know how i would do a music lesson or um even a music therapy session i was just like that how on god would that work but over over the summer i got kind of clued in and was able to kind of bring it back then um i was able to work in person a bit in september but when it all kind of started to get out of hand again in october Mm. it just was transferred online and it kind of you know it was it's it's not without its challenges but it's yeah. it's been working so yeah that, that's the thing like because you know um the fact that you're able to find something i'm exactly the same as you but when so, talking about technology i'm not good that's why and i say i have to bring his name up i'm contractually obliged every every week you know he's my he's my buddy and he does the podcast with me but he's the tech side of stuff and i'm and the mouthpiece. So it works fine, but without him, I would have been, you know, pretty lost because, like I say, I'm not great. But how satisfying! I always like the idea of teaching, teaching the arts. I suppose, and yeah. like, how satisfying is it to see like the pupils, like, or your students progress and and you know, like, uh, build their skills and confidence? Oh, it's so great! It's mm. it's one of my it's one of my favorite things about teaching music. It's just that, um, you know, especially when you see the confidence that mm. that kids can gain from from learning an instrument it's it's amazing and um or even you know doing you know they might come in they might be very shy or and then they might do their lit their concert at the at christmas or at the su- summer the end of the term and you know you can't you know you, you're you it's 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 just it's indescribable really mm. just watching them i just get very emotional like you know <laughs> Oh, absolutely. Um, yeah, we, I remember one, one concert I had, I think it was one of the first ones that all the teachers in Duna Shi and Moat had got together and we put together this big concert. It was actually 2019, I think. Okay. Yeah, I think it was 2019. We all, all of us teachers got together and we put, we put together a concert of all our different music classes. And I came home from that and I just cried because um, I have kids that only start in September, that are the previous September, who were it, getting up and they were just playing for their mammies and daddies and friends. And it was just, it was amazing, you know, to yeah. see the progress from starting from scratch in September to getting up and doing their doing their little thing at a concert is oh, i was brilliant but you know that's that's one of my favorite things about about isn't, it, yeah. isn't that lovely though like because i think it leaves a huge it's a massive thing for them because i remember when i was enough to t- bring it back to myself again i apologize no, but, that's okay. but i have that thing where right we played in the mansion house in dublin right i don't know why it was the mansion house right but we i remember metallica played there the year before so that was pretty good but i was oh, about really? eight or nine right and um we were we had um we had recorders we were playing recorder at that point 
and we played Planks the Irwin and we played it alive in the mansion and it left a huge uh, wow. imp- yeah it, it made a massive impression on me and I know my mom was obviously there she was like very very proud like all the parents are very very proud but yeah like it's I, I guess like it's class to hear you talk about how great it is and how emotional it is but then for the kids as well and for their parents yeah. it's a big big thing and like like music we were talking about this I was talking about this with a friend the other day because um we do a, a live and joyful thing on Instagram. So we have people on for 20, 25 minutes and it's about joy and we try and avoid any of the, you know, the, 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 the tough things that are going on. Yeah. And someone asked me, why is joy anyway? And I was kind of like, I was kind of, cause I didn't want to like joy is quite, it sounds like quite a high bar, you know, and then you got maybe happiness, maybe contentment. Yeah. But I thought for me, joy is like a four minute pop or rock song, right? Because, it's like you were talking about there, it brings you back to a certain place, but sometimes it's just a song that's just, you've loved since the first time you've heard it. You may not have yeah. a distinctive memory attached to it. And then I was like, like happiness for me is well, like sitting down watching a good film. And then like contentment is chilling out with a book in front of the fire. And I, I was just trying to work these things out. I was really trying to get the person to come on the show, but it didn't work. But you know, I was like selling it. I was like, you know, okay. but, but d- d- like, would you agree with that? Because obviously music is such a, it seems to be just everything in your life. Like, you know, it's a bit of, it covers a lot of stuff. Would you agree with that kind of assessment of, it can be just pure joy to listen to a song that you love? Oh, 100%. Hmm. I mean, that's, and what you've just described there, but just the absolute joy of listening to a song you love, that's what kind of, that's what, you know, drives me in my, in my teaching and, you know, what kind of what kept me up at every night until three or four in the morning you know with my little ipod and <laughs> you know, yeah. um it's what kind of you know it was it's just i suppose that's where um that's that's what kind of kind of drives i suppose the the obsession i, I always say mm. that i'm kind of obsessed to you know wh- where i just want to feel that all the time yeah i just want to get that feeling and I suppose I want to share that feeling I want to share how how music can just give you so much joy even if it's only for a minute if it's for half an hour whatever yeah. you know the the joy that you can feel and take away from it as well yeah yeah that's another thing isn't it that's like yeah you talk about like three or four minutes of joy from from the song but I do think that it can like it can continue with with mood wise for the day yeah. um it can put you and make you think oh well i like that song this is another song i like and you can go into it but here i'm gonna put you on the spot now bernadette all right this is oh, not not in a bad way <laughs> not in a bad way it's 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 okay it's it's fine i i i like asking these questions towards the end and uh, because you're so into music i thought it'd be a good one to ask now you don't have to be spot on with this answer so don't worry about that but what is your favorite song Oh, wow. Um, I'll let you think, right? I'll just fill this in. I'm going to fill in my one while you think about it, right? Yeah. You can. Yeah. You can so my I favorite love song. My favorite song, yeah. My favorite song is A Day in the Life by the Beatles, okay? Um, it is ev- everything the pop, uh, rock, whatever acid inspired song you want to talk about. It's got everything in it uh, piano, amazing voice, uh, orchestration, all the things that you want in a song in five minutes. And then it ends with these nine. It ends with this, right, this piano chord that's played nine times. I I don't know why, like, that's, like, a big thing to me. It just sounds like an amazing thing. They all just hit the, the chord at the same time. But, yeah, that's my answer anyway. Wow, that's that's a good one. <laughs> that's lovely. Um, I, like, I always say that it changes, say, from, mm. can change from day to day or week to week or whatever. But one that... I, I think I think if I had to re- really answer the question, it would be a song called "Killing the Blues" um, by the 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 original was Roland Sally. He's an American singer and songwriter. Um, but I heard it uh, from the version by Alison Krauss and Robert mm. Plant. Oh yeah, okay. Um, they yeah they did they did an album together of. I think so, some of them were covers and I'm not sure some of them might have been originals but um yeah so they did an album together anyway and I remember hearing this song and just absolutely melting mm-hmm. um because you know in the chorus where it go, it conjures this lovely image the chorus um goes um 
I, I'm going to sing it because I can sing, um, sing out. Okay, so it goes. Somebody said they saw me swinging the world by the tail, bouncing over a white cloud, killing the blues. Yeah, it's I'm, I'm, that's too low, but <laughs> no, but that was nice. I like it, and I'm killing the blues. Is that what <laughs> Yeah, but the, the image, that kind of carefree image of just, you know, you've got the world by the tail and you're, you know, you're bouncing over the cloud. It's just so carefree and it, it just kind of, I think, I think it captures the kind of the freedom from worry that we all want to have and, mm. um, you know, killing the blues as in, you know, you, you don't you're just killing them off yeah and you're free i think that i think that is just all in all in one image and i i think that's just what makes it my favorite song and i love i love to i love to sing it whenever whenever i can um it's one of my even on a uh, podcast <laughs> <laughs> yeah even on a podcast um you know anyone that knows me knows are, has played in sessions or anything with me we like oh yeah of course she's on about this again but do you know what do you know what i like though that this is what i like about it because i think um a day in the life for me it, it, amazing song is the best song i've ever heard and uh, the lyrics are very much just taken out of a newspaper lennon mccartney was it was john lennon sorry that kind of wrote it but the lyrics weren't really of much importance you know mm. but for you like in that song they seem to be maybe not the most important thing, but certainly one of the most important things in the song. And that's what kind of yeah. took you. And that's what's so amazing with music. It's like, oh, I love this song because the melody or love it because the chord changes mm -hmm. or, you know, and it can be, you know yourself, like it can be, I love songs from, sometimes there's bass lines in it that I just really, really love. I might not even love the song that much. It's just the bass line that I really love, but uh, you're not off the hook just yet, by the way. So we're going to, okay. we've got two more, we've got two more, right? So Yeah, I love this. It's great. This is it's, it, it's going to be boring from from me when I tell people because they all know like um. But what's your favorite? Who's your favorite artist? Oh, see that's tough because th you're straddling the lines between you know you, you're so into trap music. Do you want to pick a trap artist or then do you want to go into rock like you were talking? About? It's mine is obviously the Beatles. <laughs> Everybody knows that by now. I've talked about it numerous times. Yeah. Everybody knows it's the Beatles. God, my favorite artist. Oh. Um, uh, um, oh, I, don't, I, I, don't, don't worry I, about that. There's, they're yeah. still listening. There's people still listening. Don't worry about that. Okay. We've got, we've got the, we've got a proper like army that just listen right through to the end. When I say that, I mean my parents, but oh, like well, it's, okay. it's still people, isn't it? Like it's fine. It is, yeah. Um, listening to someone agonizing. Um, <laughs> it's an I awful still... question. It's another, I, I said before this, I just want people to know. I say this to everyone before the podcast. I said, that there's no kind of trick questions or you'll know every every question. And then I kind of, this is the first time I've actually, this is the first time in all these episodes that I've put someone under kind of this kind of pressure to to name. Uh, oh. and okay, I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what. Like, forget about forget about the bit, the grand scheme of things. Like, who oh, lately, yeah. who lately have you been listening to the most? Um... I have gone back to, I think that, I think this is kind of my answer anyway. Mm. Um, and I don't care if I get slagged. <laughs> Green Day is my favorite. Oh, yeah. I've gone back to listening to Green Day um, an awful lot um, in the, in the past year, even just um, because I, I don't, I don't know. Like, I don't even know why I didn't listen to them as much. Like as a teenager, it was just, Green Day, all day, every day, mm. you know, <laughs> um, and you know, I just they're they're just uh, some a band that never get old for me, do you know, and um, I just oh, have loved them. Love they can do no wrong. Um, <laughs> they, yeah, and I I think um, going back to some of their older stuff, like obviously Dookie, and mm. I, I I really like uh, Nimrod as well, but the. I think it's just I've gone back to listening to that an awful lot more because I suppose, um, especially in the last year, I've not had to kind of, you know, I've not I've not had to learn songs out of yeah. 
yeah. necessary, you know, for, I haven't had to learn as many songs for work. I haven't had to kind of be so consumed with other people's music or anything like that. that I can just listen to whatever I want, you know? So I'm kind of going, I've been kind of going back to kind of old favorites and things like that. And some of them I found, God, I can't listen to that anymore. And some of them like Green Day, I'm just like, oh, you know, yeah. it just makes my heart happy. And I was actually supposed to, I was supposed to go see them there last summer when they were coming with Weezer and oh. Fall Out Boy. Um, that's one that I can't listen to anymore, Fall Out Boy. No. <laughs> um, they haven't aged well, I wouldn't have said. No, no, I don't think so. And um I'm you know, so I said, right, I'll just I'll just go to the bar when they're on. But um <laughs> uh but no, yeah, definitely I was so excited, so I was disappointed when that didn't go ahead. Yeah. But um but yeah, definitely I think I I'm listening to an awful lot of Green Day again and just um yeah, a lot a lot of that kind of that that kind of vibe, do you know. Um So like then like okay because we we've talked about we've covered i think we've covered music for for sure right so we've covered i, I had one more there i'm not going to ask you because it's 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 even harder than the last two so to, oh. <laughs> so but okay i will ask you actually do you know what i will ask you why not why my not? podcast <laughs> i'll do it but have you ever heard it because i have not right i'll answer straight away have you ever heard a, an album that you've been able to listen to from start to finish and think there isn't a bad song on that album Oh yeah! Really? No. Oh, so oh, I've many. I've never um, found one. I've never found one. Really? It's yeah, yeah. Oh wow. Um. Well, I suppose. Do I do I have to name one? Or... No, you don't have to name one. I was just I just because yeah. I, I it's an interesting thing because, I, like you know I I'm a massive Beatles fan, but yeah, Revolver is my favorite album of all time. I adore Revolver, but Yellow Submarine is on it. And okay. And this is the thing about Yellow Submarine. I think Yellow Submarine's a lovely little uh, ditty for kind of, you know, pre like preschool kind of age group. I think that's class. You get to sing along and make a lot of noise. It's already become that, hasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Whereas like for, for, a, for a grown man, you know, sitting there with the earphones on, headphones on or whatever, and they're listening to the album, and then it hits Yellow Submarine, it kind of kills it a little bit for me. And I can go right through, I'm not going to name loads of albums, but I can go right through all the albums and there's always one. It's like the artists have this pact that they've made that they can't just put all their good songs on it. And then, uh, I don't know, it's weird. But so you, you've you come across a lot of albums that are, are perfect. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, but I mean, what's, what's perfect? Like everybody's kind of idea of perfect or that something like that is different. Um, That's interesting, actually. So do you think that... I'm looking, I'm striving for this perfection that's unattainable because I don't believe in perfect. That's a tough question. I, I said I'd finish with the tough questions and I'm not throwing that out there. Uh, no, I think it's me. I think it's probably me. Well, you know, who knows? You, you could find, you could find your perfect album one day, you know, never give up. <laughs> never give uh, up. Yeah. Yeah, um, I, I need suppose... to start listening to. I need to start listening to new albums, though. I, I, I'm not very good at keeping up to date with music. Okay, um, well, maybe, uh, maybe have a listen to. Um, this this would be one of mine that I you know there's never I never skip a, a song on this album because I this is would be kind of like one of my perfect ones. Mm. We'll say, um, and it's. It's actually by a local, a local enough artist, um, Gavin G from Tullamore. Okay, he I heard the name. Album, oh, have you? Great. Yeah, have, yeah. Um, he has an album called uh, Getting There. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Getting There. Um, he, I was I was a teenager when he brought it out and I had met him a couple of times in sessions because he'd be a friend of Camillus's. So, you know, we kind of met at sessions and things. And so I was like, oh, I know him. I'll buy it. I'll buy his album. And I was just in love with it. I was absolutely obsessed with it. And okay. even to this day, I never skip a song on it. Okay. So well, that's, have that's a look a, at that. That's a good one. That's good. I'm going to, I'm going to check that out. Um, one last question. So before we, we head off, um, apart from music and that, what do you like to do in your spare time? Um, I, I love to read. Um, hmm. I've always loved reading. Um, 
one of, yeah, one of my favorite things to do every year was uh, the. Do you ever do you remember the MS Readathon, where you read loads of books and got sponsored to? No. <laughs> yeah, did you? Did you never do that? No, I it was. Know. It was. I don't know what to do, even do it anymore. But um, yeah, it was a thing, and you'd go. I'd go around on my bike and get sponsorship from all the neighbors and. <laughs> You know, it's gas just to sit read books all day. But uh, yeah, no, I love to read. I read, and um, uh, you know, I I, I like to go walking mm. and running as well. I, I'm really starting to like running. Um, now now that I kind of know how to do it a bit more properly, my fiance kind of helps me to okay. do it properly. Is he a big? Uh, is he a big runner? He he yeah he would have been. Uh, in in his teens and that but right. he kind of he has a he has a like a hamstring injury like the kind of you know flares up every so often yeah. so yeah he kind of can't do it as much as he wants but um but yeah so he but he get kind of taught me a little bit and taught me that i can run further than i thought so right. <laughs> yeah which is great so i'm really starting to love that but um i my one of my favorite things to do is to just go uh, go off somewhere in the middle of nowhere like a big forest and just sort of get right in the middle of all the trees and just you know enjoy that just kind of listen to the the trees and the birds and that sounds very hippie but it's just it's it's just something that just fills me up like I love it do you just because you mentioned your fiance do you have a date for the wedding yet or no (laughs) No, it's always a bad question on that answer but you do do you have um Actually, no, I won't. <laughs> I won't say any more of that. But, but no, yeah, okay. it's, it's okay. um. have you been actually engaged long? Yeah, we've been engaged since, I think, 2014. But we were both in, we were both in college and right. finish it, finishing out uh, college. And then we were starting to, you know, getting our careers going. And, you know, there was, a, you know, so it's just something that's never, we've never prioritized. Obviously, we, we know we want to yeah. spend our lives together and things like that um uh but we are actually we're trying to get going on building a house uh, oh, okay so that's kind of the project at the minute and we're kind of like well do we want a house or do we want a wedding and like yeah you know. yeah that's the thing like it's you know it's going to happen but there's other things to kind of get sorted first before you can go ahead and and yeah. you know book the the date or whatever um hope i hope i got out of that one <laughs> that's <laughs> but, okay no, I can but, ask all the time. I don't mind. Yeah, uh, look, yeah, that, and that's the thing. Like I said, it to, I asked someone there recently as well, and I was like, "Why did I ask that?" Like, but um, it's fine. It's only it's only a bit of a uh, bit of crack. But listen, Bernadette, it's been brilliant having you on. Um, oh, really thank you. Fun. It's great to be here, and I hope I hope that I've answered. I hope I've answered your questions yeah. clearly and in a manner that can be understood. <laughs> because I, I I babble. I know that I babble. Um, hey. But, if people are listening to this podcast, they they know what babbling is, all right? I trust me, <laughs> all right. It's fifty four episodes in, but no, honestly, um, you, you did answer the questions correctly, and like I said earlier on, people to, to uh, know to go to Anam Kyo Music on Facebook, on Twitter, on uh, Instagram, so they yeah. know it's there if they want to go and yeah, check it I'm out. I'm always happy to have a chat with anyone mm. who who wants to to know anything, or you know, who would kind of want to maybe talk about anything they hear mm. on on the podcast if they want to kind of you know if they want uh more in-depth yeah. answer you know absolutely come talk to me i i'm happy out to, i could talk about it all day <laughs> <laughs> that's good just just uh stay there for one minute i just want to get a photo yeah. but i'll just finish the episode out all right um okay. so i want to thank john of course for all his his tech savvy um Big thanks to my mum, my dad, my granddad, as always. Also to Jer for the logo, to Calvin for the mu- intro on the music. Um, uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel, please, if you would. Uh, we're on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, just like Anna Kyo. That's another. That's three ads we've got in there now. Um, we're also on uh, the podcast platform, Spotify, Apple, Anchor, Google Podcasts. The, uh, p- podcast etc there's another couple there um i want to say thanks to everyone for listening as always it's uh, it's uh, it's lovely having you along and to bernadette once again thank you very much oh no problem i'm just delighted and flattered really to be asked yeah oh, stop <laughs> but um thanks everyone uh, we'll chat to you next week take care